today we are heading out for our sea trial on the boat that we just made an offer on which is a bay liner 4087 uh here in seattle it is cold it's about 39 degrees a little windy uh winds are about 13 um, knots from the north so we're going to head straight into those winds going to shilshul for our haul out mm -hmm. So we'll have our broker with us, our brother-in-law with us, and then I'm not sure who's going to be with us from the other side, at least their broker and maybe the owner. So maybe, yeah. uh, it's supposed to you know, be a great test because we're in a little bit of bad weather. It's a bigger boat. It's going to go slower, uh, not like our old boat. It's not a planing boat. It's a semi-disbursement. Mm -hmm. Displacement. 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 for you to say. So hopefully everything goes well with the survey and the inspection, and uh, we'll wait and see. So stay tuned and come along with us today, and we'll take you on the sea trials with us. Okay. See you in a bit. Bye. The boat is currently moored at Elliott Bay Marina on Dock A. This is on the west side of the marina, opposite of where we used to be. This is where we'll be keeping it for now, as it needs a bigger spot at about 47 feet. Well, here it is. Our happy day, a Bayliner 4087, the year 2002. Twice. Totally. So um, this way we'll get over there, get to the haul out, and uh, be on time, mm -hmm. and then on the way back. Perfect. That works. No YouTube in me. <laughs> <laughs> Too late. This is prosperity. Too late. Just checking the dinghy. That works. The nav lights. The nav lights work? Yep. Okay. Does that thing have lights? Does the stereo work? No, that's the accessory. When you hit accessory, oh, okay. it came on. Turn the key on, just don't start it. Just turn it to engage. There you go. Okay, just right there. We wanted to test the dinghy and make sure that the engine worked, but we didn't want to put it completely in the water. So Scott crawled into it haphazardly and was able to get it started. So now we know it at least it runs. There you go. Oh, that thing's styling. Well, that's, that's good enough. That is a kick. Maybe. It's running. Elliott Bay Yacht Sales, who we're buying the boat from, hired a captain named Dale, and he's the one that took us to Shulshul. He also shared a lot of insight with us along the way. This is about where Allie would be freaking out. You have five feet, you have three feet, you have one foot. <laughs> It's easy because it'll spin on its axis. Yeah. Even with the PSA, it's easy. Mm-hmm. Because he's like, we're going to hit the ball, we're going to hit the ball. This is one of you. You should thrust her very much. Just use it for fine. Oh, God, it's moving. Not using it, but I know that feeling. Perfect. Yeah, that's easy. Take it slow, and that's all you have to do, right? Well, that spot looks a lot smaller. <laughs> it's going to be quite the target. So at this point, are you just basically in, in idle speed? Yeah. Okay. Idle. idle and forward. I'm steering it with the, the helm rather, uh -huh. than, rather than doing this. Right. Do this. So you can use the helm at idle speed and you, yeah. you can oh, yeah. have pretty good control, yeah. which is a little bit different than um, the stern drives. I'm just accenting the turn quicker. Mm -hmm. Yep. And here comes the rail.
When you arrive at Seaview Boatyard, the only way to get out of the boat is to go out to the bow, reach over for the ladder that's straight ahead, and crawl up and over onto the pier. To say it's terrifying is an understatement. I didn't go back the same way I came in. We just climbed up that ladder. Holy, holy. This is the exciting part. Doesn't it seem like we were just here? <laughs> it was just a year ago. <laughs> a year yeah. ago next month. But not with this boy. We only had one hour to get the boat pressure washed and inspected while it stayed in the slings at Seaview Boatyard. So we had to hurry. Once out of the slings, we were really surprised to see how clean the bottom was and how great the zincs looked. They say it's been a few years since they replaced them, but by looking at them, you can tell they're almost new. So they picked me off of the dock there because there was no way I was going to climb back on. Now we're heading back out of the marina, back to Elliott Bay. On our way back to Elliott Bay, we went out to the bay and tested the engines at full throttle. Twenty-four, he said, right? 
you say 24, 26? So do you prefer to go back and forth between the two engine, the two Yeah, sides? it makes it a little easier. I don't have to steer. Right. I just got one chug a little bit. Mm -hmm. I call it in and out, one click, two clicks, that right. kind of thing. Everybody gets used to, uh, you know, different ways of exactly, doing it. Exactly, yeah. I just, this way I have a little more control. And then we got this beautiful thing right here if we need it. Exactly, yeah. A little security blanket there. Grand Banks. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Yet, not yet, no. Kurt is. There we go. I'm the doctor. Alright. Well, hey guys. so uh, if you followed along our little fun journey uh, last, no, it's been a week, when, a week ago Wednesday. Yeah, time flies. We're having fun. So the survey <laughs> came back. It is 50 pages. <laughs> so that tells you how thorough he is. Uh, you know, I don't know if you noticed in any of the footage or when you read on our blog, but Chuck is a, a former Navy submarine engineer, mm -hmm. 24 years, so he came in his, all his garb. And, yeah, uh, I saluted him. Yeah, <laughs> he came in his jumpsuit. And uh, unlike our last survey, which was fine, uh, but it was about seven pages, this thing... Well, it was a smaller boat, a simpler boat to survey. That's true. So. Uh, this one also comes with oil samples. So that's really what we were kind of waiting on. Um, and the full report. So the full report came back. We had a preliminary within a couple days that said, no red flags, don't mind our um, ice maker. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was a good sign. Then from there, we waited on oil samples and they were mm -hmm. checking to make sure that there was no fragments um, in of- Yeah, no metal shavings, no nothing. So it came back clean. The only thing it came back with was a little bit of in 
higher iron. Oh, okay. But they said that was just normal. Normal. They said the recommendation. Did um, a new oil change. Was doing oil change, and that was actually not in the engines. That was actually in the gearbox. So the one recommendation that came back is to get a full uh, oil change in both diesel engines and uh, both gearboxes. Mm -hmm. So. I think the takeaway too is that whenever you're buying a boat, and I think you all know this, you would never buy a boat without having a survey done. No matter how clean the boat, and this this boat is clean. The, yeah. the engine compartments are clean, the exterior is clean, the interior is clean, but you would never want to buy a boat. Just like you wouldn't buy a house without having it inspected as well because you just don't know. You don't know. You know, and granted, yeah, the engine could blow up tomorrow and, it, and the best survey is not going to show you that but it still allows you to sleep a little bit better at night just knowing somebody else has looked at it. Yeah. So is it completely perfect? No, but they were so minor things that we probably would have done anyways. Mm -hmm. You know, things from batteries to oil changes to, uh, we have to do a couple little, you know, uh, interior things. You know, we're gonna swap out some snapping carpet. Mm -hmm. We're gonna do a little- I mean, it is, it's a 17 year old. Yeah. Boat. So it's a 17 year old boat. If you remember back when we bought Kokomo, <clears throat> and you can find that on our blog under gear, I think in gadgets, mm -hmm. as a tab, we bought everything for that boat because it came with nothing. It didn't come with safety equipment. It didn't come with galleyware. It didn't mm -hmm. come with anything, any bedding. It didn't come with anything. So we felt bad for the new owners of Kokomo and we said, here, have it. Take everything. Except, Okay, so here comes the confession. We kept the lock lines. We kept our, our bow chairs that we bought. And those mm -hmm. are brand new. And we kept maybe a couple little things from the bathroom, and that was about it. Yeah, um, not much. I mean. So now we have a boat that, again, came with nothing, including no safety stuff. So we had to Yeah, not it. even the decals. So we have to buy the decals, <laughs> Coast Guard kit. Um, it's got bedding from 17 years ago. Gross. Okay, those yeah, are going. Yeah, yeah. Um, I want to put in, at least in our stateroom, I want to put in this like really thick um, foam mattress stuff. They were at the mm. boat show and the RV show. A new mattress, basically. Basically, a new mattress. We don't um, care about the other bed. We need all new dishes. There's a possibility that the stove and the oven don't work. Um, we couldn't get it to test. So if that's the case, we may be buying a new. Uh, $1,500. Yeah. It's a 17-year-old boat. Did we mention that? Um, so that's what, so where we're at right now today is Saturday. It's Scott's birthday. Whoop, whoop. Happy birthday. And uh, we're supposed to close on Wednesday the 6th, but Mr. Uh, Helfen here is going to be in Miami. And the title company that we're using does not do power of attorney. So that means he has to be present. So the other option then is we extend the closing date to the 7th, one day. Uh, if the Coast Guard documentation on the boat is back. Um, you might be wondering, well, why don't you just do it on Monday uh, when he's here? Well, here's the other bummer of everything is that um, the, the boat needs to be cleared by the Coast Guard. And what that means is to make sure it's not stolen. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know if most of you know this, but there's been a government shutdown lately. <laughs> and so the Coast Guard is really, really behind. The chances of a meeting having it ready by Thursday the 7th is going to be slim. Mm -hmm. But fingers crossed, because why? What happens Thursday night? We're flying to St. Martin. Woohoo! For our anniversary and for a seven day cruise. Yep, on a tall ship. So uh, it's very possible that this entire thing may not get wrapped up until we get back. Mm -hmm. Well, the boat's not going anywhere. The boat's so not going anywhere. No big deal. And then from there, whether it be that day or when we get back, then our broker, Steve Thorson from Lake Union Sea Ray, he'll come out, give us the keys. Hopefully that same day, uh, or ish, however we plan this, he'll uh, practice with us, docking it in and out of the slip. It's a pretty tight slip if you watch us. They in. say the bigger the boat, the easier to dock. Well, we'll see. You're good at there'll, it. There'll be plenty of video of that coming I think you'll in be the fine. next few weeks <laughs> of how that's going to work. Well, she's going to have to do it too, you know. Yeah. So I'm going to practice, and then the plan is uh, we'll practice in the slip, and then... 
From there, we're going to take it through the locks to uh, Lake Union Sea Ray to have it serviced. Mm -hmm. And uh, that'll all be with Steve as well. So mm -hmm. hopefully, we'll have a boat by mid April. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. That should be about it, which would be perfect. That's when boating season begins around here. Well, May, what is it, May 1st? Uh, May 3rd, May 3rd, I think 3rd well, or 4th. Yeah, that weekend. Yeah. And uh, the only caveat to all that, you know, you're so excited. You've got a new boat. We're excited to work on it. We have to clean the, um, is it the lazarette that's in the transom? What do you call that? Yeah, the lazarette. Yeah, in the cockpit. <clears throat> so we have to clean that out. Yeah. It's a little dirty, but the only caveat to all of this entire story is that we're probably moving as well. <laughs> yeah, the next six weeks are going to be mm. crazy. Yep, and then not to mention work. We, I do all yeah. of our events, so we've got boating events that we're doing. We've got sales coming up. We have boat shows coming up. So, I don't know. Welcome to the boating life. Welcome to our life. So, <laughs> it's going to be crazy. Yeah. We'll keep you all up to date. Well, as always, thank you for following us. We're hoping to grow our channel. So now that we've got a boat again, we're going to have a lot more content. We're going to get a lot more involved this time. Mm -hmm. A lot of you are asking, is this our liveaboard? It is not our liveaboard. You it could, could be. You could. It could be. We're not quite there yet. Yeah. But and it also... If we don't find an apartment, it may be our liveaboard. <laughs> Unfortunately, where it's staying isn't, doesn't allow a liveaboard. So that's still always that caveat. But if you happen to know any uh, marinas out here in Seattle that are taking um, liveaboards and it needs a 47-foot slip, uh, call us. Let us know. Yep. Well, as always, thanks for following us. We are hoping to grow our YouTube channel this year, and we are going to have a lot more content, and we'll share a lot of the things we're going to work on this boat for you. So, Like learning how to dock, for instance. Learning how to dock, working on it, if we have to replace the stove, the different things we're going to do. We want to document all that, not just for us, but maybe for other people who have a Bayliner 4087 or a similar boat. So please like and subscribe. Give us a thumbs up. Make comments down below. And, uh, and subscribe. And follow our blog at BoatingJourney.com. You can always find us on all of the social media channels, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. We'll see you next time. Thanks, everyone. Bye.